talk about some very exciting results from our 2021 work here with Thrive On Technology at the Scott Learning Center. And I want to talk about one of the most exciting components of all of it. And there, there's a lot of things we need to consider when we're building a cotton pest management system for use here uh, around the Southern Cotton Belt. We have taken effort this year to establish a plot that contains two varieties. One of those varieties contains the Thrive On technology and one does not. We've also, over the top of that, overlaid several insecticidal and insect control regimes based around either truly prophylactic treatments or the use of the currently adopted and accepted state threshold. So behind me is a, is a variety that we actually, it does not contain the Thrive On technology, and we manage it as we would manage cotton here in the Delta. From that, what we have learned is that the currently used thresholds and the techniques and tools that we have available to us, they work on some level. We were able to control the insects, and I'll share with you the rough results as we walk down the uh, turn row here. As I said, we had a, a pretty good result here. We sprayed this five times with Ligus targeted insecticides. That was based around the state thresholds as collected either using visual scouting, sh uh, shake sheets, or sweet net samples. Now, as we move along, I'll tell you kind of the general result. If you go out in this, we collected retention data weekly. And we did that for eight or nine weeks through the year. From that weekly sampling, we observed in this non-Thrive On containing variety, which is Delphine 2055B3XF, here where we treated it five times, the retention in it is in the low 70% range. Now we're gonna take some final sampling and, and sort of truss that number up a little bit through the, through the fall. But I also wanna show you the result of the, the insect pressure that we had when we didn't intervene at all. Our insects started to arrive here just right before bloom. We had a pretty large number of Ligus bugs relatively show up. What we saw, and you see behind me here, is a result of that that happens when we don't spray at all. This won't pick much cotton at all. It'll, it'll have as much trash as it does land in it, probably. Our insect pressure was, was high, relatively high, not the highest I've ever seen, but it was relatively high, and it was sustained for a very long period, relatively. That being about a five or six week period of having large numbers of insects migrating into the fields. And you'll see that they did significant damage here to this untreated cotton. Right here, between, uh, in this break of where we mowed this cotton out for our compliance border, you'll see the impact that the Thrive On technology actually had directly on the numbers of insects that were either moving into the field or generated into the field. And we're gonna figure out and separate that on some level, I hope, through this research program. Over here, where we have low sort of retention, you see there's not very much white evident to the, to the eye. When you look over here, this is the Thrive On the variety containing the Thrive On, which is DP2131. I want to share with you some of the results that we've observed here where we didn't spray the Thrive On at all. Because I think there's some important messages and some important things to acknowledge as we evaluate using this technology. Where we didn't spray this, this Thrive On containing variety at all, the retention in it is in the low 70% range, which is very similar to the non-Thrive On cotton down there where we sprayed it five times but you can't assume that to be the whole story because it's not. The next plot or experimental unit out here adds to the, the story that is developing because it's, it has some, some very important limitations to acknowledge as we think about how we're gonna use this technology. Now behind me where we're standing here, what we've done is taken the, the Thrive On containing variety and we manage it using the currently adopted and accepted thresholds for Ligus bugs here in the Delta. And we scouted this weekly for several weeks. This actually triggered three insecticide applications. And you can see versus that previous plot where we didn't spray the Thrive On technology containing variety at all, there's more white out there. So it, it improved the crop on some level. Now by way of numbers, the retention in here where we sprayed this three times, triggered strictly by the threshold, the retention in here is in the low 90% range. So when you start to think about what we've what we've measured and what it's offered. We've had pretty significant impacts, number one, with the technology alone, but secondarily, we've improved it and built a better pest management system, it appears, on the surface at least, when we applied insecticides as directed by the, by the currently used thresholds. 
So it's a very exciting technology that's going to help us build a pest management system that is sustainable and hopefully usable by the cotton industry for a very long time into the future. I think there are three or four primary things that we need to consider and the preliminary conclusions we draw from this work. Number one, when you see large numbers of migrating adult plant bugs moving into fields, thrive on or not, particularly in the thrive on, when we start to figure out how to use it optimally, when you see those large numbers of adults moving into the field, scout aggressively and apply the controls when they need to be applied. We did that and we're, we're, it appeared that that was a very successful venture. Uh, it has added to, to what we were able to do. Secondarily, there is some impact of the technology on that reproduction of that migrating generation that moves in that, that we often have to trigger some controls against. You can see that down here where the cotton was totally untreated. And thirdly, use the threshold. Now they may be refined over time, Certainly science will grow and learn as we do this uh, more into the future, but we believe we've got a tool here that offers a, uh, an excellent opportunity to improve cotton pest management on many cotton acres around the U.S.